guys, we are going to start by cooking the meat uh, for the empanadas. I'm going to use my heavy Dutch oven for this. I cut up the beef chuck roast into smaller pieces. And we're just going to put it into our Dutch oven. We are going to add enough water just to cover the meat. And we're going to start adding our seasoning. Here I have some crushed garlic, two bay leaves, some oregano, and some cumin seeds, some salt, and some pepper. And we're going to add a half of an onion that I just quartered. Mix this up. Wait till it comes to the boil. Reduce the heat to a medium low. You just want it simmering for about two hours just to where the meat is fork tender. I will be back to show you all that. Okay, the meat has hit the boil point and just make sure that your meat is submerged in the water. If it's too foamy, your meat, make sure that you skim it as you go. I'm gonna turn this down to a medium low and we're gonna cook this for about two hours. So I'll see you back here. Alrighty, we are back at the stove. I moved it over here. We are going to remove the meat from the broth so that we could let it cool for shredding. And then we are going to strain the broth because we're going to use some of that broth because it has a lot of flavor in there. Okay, that's it for that. Move this back up and I'm just going to set this aside to cool. We're going to get the chile ready for the meat. Okay, so here I have a little stock pot. I am going to add my red chile guajillos and all I did was uh, remove the seeds and the stems and I cut them smaller. And these are the chile anchos. I will insert a picture right here of what they are and their name. So this is what it looks like. You can cut them into smaller pieces if you want to. Okay, we are going to add some salt, one garlic, we are going to add a quarter of an onion, sliced in half, and then we're going to add some water. And we're just going to add enough water to cover the chiles. Once it comes to the boil, we're going to let it sit for about five minutes to rehydrate the chiles. Okay, I hope you can see that better now. Okay, we're gonna let this come up to the boil. We will be back. Okay, this came up to the boil. I'm gonna shut it off, leave it here until it's completely cool so we can pop it in the blender. It just needs to rehydrate the chiles. Okay, I'll be back. Alrighty guys, we're back at the counter. I'm just gonna strain this broth. Got a lot of flavor going on here. And what I don't use in the recipe today, I will store it in a freezer container and use it for another recipe. Okay, and that's it. I started to shred the beef. As soon as it's cool enough for you to shred it, just shred it real thinly like this. And it shreds real easy. You can use a knife if you want to, whatever's fast for you. Okay guys, all shredded. Now we are going to blend the chiles into the blender. Okay, I poured my red chilies in here. We are not gonna add any more seasoning to it. We're gonna add it to the meat. So we want this to be pureed very, very finely. Okay, and there it is. It's pureed very, very finely. You wanna make sure and do that. For at least a minute or so, let it go because it will not blend the peel of the chile. So you need to make sure and go pretty hard on it, okay? All right, we are going to move back over to the stove. But before we go over there, I got a large potato and I diced it into little cubes. And I just have it here with some water so they don't get brown. I just have them in little cubes like this. If you need more for your family, you can add more. But this is all I want to add to mine right now. All right, we're going to pop back on over to the stove. All righty, we're back at the stove. I already have a skillet, pretty large skillet. I'm going to add about three tablespoons of oil, oil of your choice. We're going to get this hot. 
Okay, and we are going to add, we have three cups of the red chili. We're going to add about a cup and a half right now. Okay, we'll add some ornament. You see how nice it's frying up there? You hear that sizzle? Okay, now we're going to start adding in the meat. Okay, we're going to add just about a half a cup more of chili. Okay, and you see how thick the meat is? Well, we still need to cook the potatoes. So that's why we reserve the broth from the meat. As soon as I get this all incorporated, I know how much meat I'm going to add. See, I'm still breaking up the beef so that it's in real thin shreds. Now we're going to add some broth. We're going to add a cup. About a cup and a half of broth. You don't want it too wet. Because as soon as the potatoes are done, most of that liquid should be absorbed. You might have to add a little bit more. Another half. Okay, now this is your chance to season up the beef the way you like it, the way your family likes it. You give it a taste. If you need to adjust the salt, the pepper, you do that now. Because this will be your last chance to do it. So we're going to let this simmer. We're going to add our potatoes. And we're going to turn the heat down so that our potatoes can cook. It'll take about 15-20 minutes. And I'm going to give it a taste here in a minute. Make sure our salt is okay. So definitely going to need some salt. Okay, now the meat is simmering. I adjusted the salt a little bit. And I'm going to turn the heat down to a low. And we're going to let this go for about 20 minutes or so until most of this liquid is absorbed and your potatoes are fork tender. Okay, we will be back. Okay, guys, the meat is done. Most of the liquid has evaporated. I'm going to set it aside so that it can cool completely. And we are going to start stuffing our empanada dough. See you at the counter. Okay, everybody, I'm going to roll out the dough for the empanadas. We're going to stuff them. Now, the dough recipe, I am going to link the video above, right up here in that little eye in the sky, and you can go and watch the, the recipe for the masa there because it's the same one as I did for my other empanadas. Very tasty, real flaky dough. I really think you will enjoy it. And, of course, I always say don't put as, the least amount of flour you can if it's shrinking up on you, let it sit and rest for a few minutes and then it'll stretch out nicely. I just roll out the dough like in the shape of a tortilla and pretty much the size of a tortilla. Try to get it the same thickness all the way around, just like that. And then you take your filling. You try to drain the, the filling as much as you can, okay? Because you don't want this uh, watery because it'll come through the dough and explode on you in the fryer. So you put as much filling as you want. Put some potatoes in there. Okay, and then I take, I'm going to show you the cheese that I buy. This Chihuahua shredded cheese. This is great cheese for quesadillas, for all kinds of stuff that you like, a melty cheese. I like to use that. I always have a bag of that in my freezer. Or if you don't want to put cheese, don't put it. That's up to you. Okay, and then we just flip it over on itself. Get the air out. Press down with your fingertips, turn it to the side like that, and go forward, pinch, forward, pinch, forward, pinch, just like that. And there you go. Real easy. I'm going to put them on a tray that I have over here, and when we get a few, we're going to start to fry them. So I'm just going to continue to roll here. guys we're back at the stove I have the oil at 310 or 315 and we're going to start dropping in our empanadas
everybody. That was it for the empanadas. Look at that. See how beautiful that looks with just some sliced avocado and some hot sauce. The, this pastry is so flaky. I said that in the other video as well, but I just want y'all to know how really happy I am with this recipe. It's really delicious. Okay, enough with the yakking. Let's put some hot sauce and give it a taste. Wow, look at how flaky that is. How delicious. If you want to put a little bit of hot sauce there and... Mmm. Mm -mm. These, are, these are delicious. I really do hope you give these a try. I'm going to try to bring you in for a close-up so you can see the filling. It's still hot, but it's delicious. Just the perfect amount of filling. A little bit of cheese, not, not too overloaded with cheese. You want to taste that meat with that red chili colorado. It's delicious, guys. I sure hope you enjoyed it. I will leave the video for the masa, the recipe for the masa linked in the up here in the eye in the sky. Just look for it there and the ingredients and everything will be in the description box with everything that I use. So take a look there first. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and go follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Virtual Kitchen with Laura. If you have any questions about the recipe, leave it in the comments below and I will get back with you. And don't forget, share the video, share the video. The more the merrier. Thank you so much. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.